Once again, assume that she, she she did what we've talked about. That she bought that the uh, the, uh, the the or she got the the reverse mortgage, and then she got the five year annuity with the reverse mortgage. Remember, the reverse mortgage generated three hundred seventy five thousand dollars, and she bought this reverse annuity that generates about seventy thousand dollars a year. So, if she's not in the nursing home, uh, or if she is, but even if she's not, look at that middle column. If she has every year five thousand dollars worth of funds because she's being conservative and she doesn't want to run out of money and saves um, the, the, uh, the rest, right? She can be saving about $70,000 a year. Remember, she had originally about $100,000 in savings, so at the end of five years, she's had some fun and she's got a ton of savings, $450,000 or $450,000 back in the bank in savings. Or during those years, she could have had more fun and therefore had less savings, but she can kind of like figure that out. But the point is, as a result of getting the reverse mortgage, she finds herself in a position after five years that she's got a lot of money. Or if during those five years, you know, tragically she had to go to a nursing home, that money that's in that middle column would all be accumulated in the D4C so that it could be used for her benefit until she lives to whatever age. Until she lives to whatever age. So, there are, there are a lot of reasons about the thinking about, in this situation, about the reverse mortgage. Next slide. And, and, and by the way, just to talk for a few minutes about that D4C. Suppose that she is stuck in the nursing home uh, and she needs to qualify for, the, for, the, uh, for, the, uh, um, for mass health. And now this D4C money is available. The D4C can be used to provide really anything that she needs while she is there. So if she's there because she is just physically disabled and still mentally fine, and she can see, well, then you can buy her DVDs. And if she can hear, then you can buy her CDs. And if she still has the capacity with assistance, with the assistance of a child, for example, to get out and go on a vacation, the D4C will pay for the vacation. And when she gets back to the nursing home, she's still on mass health. And they'll even pay for the person who's going with her on the vacation so that she has the capacity to go on the vacation. It will pay for anything that Mary could possibly need or want to improve her life for the rest of her life. And once again, it's all being done with her money. I mean, that was, that's kind of like the idea. Um, next slide. Now, in the, in, the, in the context of all of that, and I, I know we went through kind of a lot of material regarding the things that, that Mary could do. What about long-term care insurance? Well, because long-term care, because a lot of the discussion that we've had, right, was really about, about protecting some assets because of this possibility that they could really be drained down as a result of nursing home care. Well, in that situation, um, long-term care insurance can help you, except that it has been my experience that for people like Frank and Mary, long-term care insurance is a hard sell because the premiums are just so high. Um, and so that may not be a great alternative. One, one thing that would be interesting for, for Frank and Mary to have, and I just want to mention this to you, is when you're talking to long-term care insurance people, you know, the policy they want to sell you is like the big policy, right? The one that, that will cover you for five years' worth of nursing home care. And by the way, it's a, you know, it provides a very, for people with more wealth than Mary and Frank, the long-term care insurance policy may make a lot of sense because I'll give you the example. If you're, if you're in a nursing home, if, you're, if Frank's dead and Mary's going into the nursing home and they haven't done any of this stuff, right, um, then, and their kids, should, and Peter, Paul, and Mary come to me and they go, oh, what do I do? Um, I'll tell them, I say, well, you know, one thing you can do, right, unless you want to put all the money in the D4C, which is always possible, and qualify right away, is you can transfer all your money out of Mary's name right now to you, the kids, and then just start paying the nursing home bill every day or every month for five years. And the first day following the fifth anniversary of that transfer, whatever's left is safe. 
Because the rule is that when you're qualifying for mass health, you can always transfer things, and I'm sure you've all heard this, you can always transfer assets out, and then there's a five-year look-back period, so you have to wait five years, and the rest of the assets are safe. Now, the problem with that strategy in Mary's case was, remember, she had $400, a house worth $400,000 and cash of $300,000 for a total of $700,000. If you're here at, oh, I always forget the name. What is the name? Windermere. If you're at Windermere, the, the day per day cost, if my recollection serves, is about $400, right? Or about $12,000 a month, or about $144,000 a year. Let's round to $150,000, or $750,000 in five years. Now remember, they've only got $700,000. So this strategy doesn't work great for her, <laughs> because she's, all of the money is still going to go on private pay to the nursing home during that five-year period. If, on the other hand, Mary came, Mary's kids came to me and said, oh, I have a million five in assets. I don't have 750000 And I, I'll tell them the same thing. Transfer it all out. Wait five years. At the end of the five years, you get whatever is left. But in that case, if they had a million five, at the end of five years, they would have spent seven fifty, and they'd still have seven fifty left, right? So there are situations, in, 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 and in that situation, if they had bought this long-term care insurance policy, so that during that five years, they weren't paying anything on private pay because the long-term care insurance policy were big enough to pay Windermere, right? Then at the end of the five years, they'd have all million five, right? Or going back to Frank and Mary's case, if they had a big, big policy that would cover that $750,000 gap, at the end of five years, they'd still have all $750,000. So, but that's, a, that's an expensive policy. The one they don't talk to you about is this one. If you have a policy that, 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 has, that says that it kicks in uh, after you've been in a nursing home for a year, right, after a year, uh, that the, the elimination period can be as long as that, and that after that, it's going to pay $125 a day for two years, for 730 days, right? And if that policy was in effect after March 15, 1999, then the existence of that policy protects your house and means that even if one or both of you need nursing home care and the house is still in your name, you don't have to sell the house. There's no lien on the house. The house is completely safe, right? So once again, going back to, 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 to Mary and Frank's example where, there, where one of their big assets is the house, one way that they could always be assured that they were protecting the house would be by buying this very inexpensive policy. And one of the reasons why I mention this is to, if, if your kids are really interested in always coming back to the vineyard, you might want to talk to them about this policy, <laughs> right? Because, because, of course, this policy doesn't do anything for you, right? Because remember, if you're Frank and Mary and there's a couple and one of you is going to the nursing home, the house is safe because we're just going to transfer the house to the other one, right? And, and, and if Frank is dead and Mary's going to the nursing home, it's not doing anything for her because she's in the nursing home, right? What this is really doing something for is the kids, right? So this policy, you may want to say to the kids, because this is not an expensive long-term care insurance policy. You know, kids, if you really want to be sure you can always come back to the vineyard, you may want to think about buying me an insurance policy <laughs> on the house just to protect the house. We so just wanted to kind of mention that. Next slide. Um, finally, uh, there is always the possibility of transferring property into an irrevocable trust. Now, go going back, and this is probably the alternative that you have heard the most about when you talk to people and you always hear about, oh, you've got to transfer your property into an irrevocable trust, you've got to wait five years, and then your property is all going to be safe. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I put this up last is remember, first of all, if you're Frank and Mary and you're both alive, you never have to do this, right? You never have to do this because if one of you goes into a nursing home, all the assets are safe, you just shift them to the other person, you change your will to make sure the property is going to get held in trust after that person dies and everything is safe. So you never have to lose control of your assets while you're alive. If you're just Mary, remember in the, in, in, in the example, you're Mary, Frank has died, you're 89 years old, you really want to save the house, what about putting it into an irrevocable trust? Great idea, except if it's an irrevocable trust, you can't get a reverse mortgage. Because you can only get a reverse mortgage based on the fact that you own the house. 
and you can't transfer it into an irrevocable trust after you own the house because if you transfer the property, it triggers a default on the mortgage. So from Mary's situation, right, where she, where she was not a rich person, she's just got this house that's got a lot of value, and she's only got, you know, in her situation, $100,000 in assets. For her to do this kind of planning in terms of her goals, staying at home until she dies, is a bad idea. Works great for the kids, right? Because it saves the house as long as she's transferred the house out and waited five years. But it isn't great in terms of the planning for Mary. So when, you, when you're considering these kinds of options, you really kind of want to, you need to kind of balance those, you need to balance those interests out. Next slide. Finally, as you all, you've all seen that slide, that's my, always my favorite ending slide. Remember, I've suggested a bunch of things, but I don't know the answer to your situation. I don't know how your life works best. The correct answer for all of your planning is what makes you sleep well at night. If you're really worried about something else, if, you've got, if you really need to keep complete control of your assets, then you really don't want to be transferring them out. If you've got a real worry about nursing home, maybe it's worth the premium you're paying for long-term care. Only you can figure any of those things out. Thank you very much. Questions?